Starting July 1st, BNN Media will have a new general manager. This will be the organization's third permanent leader in more than 35 years, but he comes into the job after multiple roles with BNN as a producer and host, a board member, and most recently as director of BNN's FM radio station, WBCA. We'd like to welcome the new GM, Glenn Williams, and the outgoing transition manager, Susan O'Connor. Thank you both for being with us. Nice to be here. First of all, let's start with, with Glenn Williams, yes. uh, because um, you, know, you have a lot of feet uh, in yes. being in here, but you're also a performance uh, yes. person and an artist, right? Yes. Uh, um, one of the things that I've always been involved in, in, in the arts for my whole life, but I'm, I'm, the, what, what I'm leaving right now to come to Boston, Universe, the Boston Neighborhood Network was the, um, I was teaching. I was the art director at a, at a parochial school in, in Rosendale, elementary and middle school. And uh, I got to teach art, I got to teach music, I got to teach a little theater. We actually had a television and radio station at the school for the younger kids to work on and, and get them streaming to their, to their classrooms so they can make some daily announcements and stuff. So I've really been, been involved quite a bit. Susan, uh, the, the choice of Glenn says something about the future of BNM Media. What is it, you think? I think that, that um, not only BNN Media, but PEG stations in general are critical to the well-being of a community in the sense that, um, there, with the exception of NNN, um, there are no TV stations, in the, even in the Boston area, that are solely devoted to local news. It's a New England perspective. And even though Boston is a huge um, media market, if you watch any of the uh, evening news programs, you don't get a lot of Boston news unless it's bleeding or leading or somebody's gotten killed or there's some level of disaster. Whereas with NNN and with the programs that come on to BNN, you really get a flavor for what's going on in the neighborhoods, what it is that is important to the people who are taking the time to produce their programs, or to drop them off, and you know, their technical term is hyperlocal, but that's def definitely something that's very important. And if you look at some of the locations that the Colorados and some of the other places where you don't have radio, sta radio and TV stations right in the area, some of them absolutely, you don't even have to go to Colorado, you can go to Western Massachusetts. Um, Western Massachusetts is considered by the commercial stations to be in the Albany metropolitan district. And so that's where they get all of their, that's the focus. That's where they get all of their commercials. Whereas with BNN, um, it's, it's what's happening here. And I think that that's a critical thing. Glenn, I, I, know, I know technology has changed quite a bit even yeah. over the last couple of decades, but, but take me back to the beginnings for you with right. BNN. What got you involved? Well, I, originally, I, we, my, my buddy and I were in a band and we were playing to raise some money for a food pantry or something. We were having a concert and uh, the local policing television show at, at Boston Neighborhood Network asked me to come on and talk about it for four minutes. And I went on and talked about what we were doing and stuff. And then, in those days, it was literally a closet on the first floor of the transportation building in Park Square with a hole in the wall and a camera stuck through it. And we kind of sat there, and someone put their hand in the door and counted us down, and off we went. Um, uh, that was quite a few years ago. And I've kind of seen BNN go through the digital divide. I've seen us, I've seen us grow in, in, in our studio space. I've seen us grow in our technology and our ability to provide, provide the citizens of the city of Boston their, their fair, fair voice. And I think that um, we are at the point now with the technology where I'm sad to say, and I'm not sad to say, I think technology is something that we obviously have to continue to keep up with. Um, but we got kids, like I said earlier, producing stuff at their home on their tablets and stuff. We need to bring them in and show them that we've got Final Cut Pro 10. We've got all these ways to use the audio board, how to use the lights, how to set up your shots, how to use these incredible cameras that are better than the one on your phone or on your tablet. And, and edit it in a great Timothy Smith lab that we have there with these state-of-the-art Mac computers. That's where we are now. I think we have to reach out to our younger kids and say, look at, 
we can take what you're using on your tablet and on your phone and improve it to where now you're really doing programming. Oh, by the way, call your friends because it's going to be on Channel 9 tonight. So what's the advantage for, for a young person to be able to do it? Because I, I, got, I got a cell phone. I can put this on Facebook. I mean, why do I need to, to learn how to edit? You want a job? You're not necessarily going to be able to get the job because you know how to click a few buttons on your phone. Um, we just finished um, working with Madison Park High School, who has a radio and TV broadcast program. Their seniors have capstone projects. Now, these kids have produced video on their phone for since they were yo high. Um, but what they learned in terms of those capstone projects are soup to nuts in terms of what does it take to actually get something that is broadcast quality. And um, there were 11 of them. They had a very wide variety of programs. And for the first time, their programs are being broadcast because we, we, BNN is, is uh, showing those programs. And the school is beside themselves happy. And these kids are going to get the experience of being able to say, it's been broadcast. It's gone through the traditional media that a lot of people don't have access to the internet. They're relying, they're relying on their, still relying on their um, cameras, or not cameras, TVs, in order to be able to get whatever kind of news entertainment. And so it's, it's actually opening up new avenues of um, distribution to these kids that's not necessarily a YouTube or a Vimeo or whatever your favorite project you explain is. Explain that. Uh, it's, I mean, the, these, these younger people, they're, they're younger than millennials, maybe, yeah. but they're TV-centered in a way. I, I actually believe that there's definitely a difference between anybody can have a YouTube station. Anybody can get on that. That's anybody who wants, you can put any kind of content up there. But but to call your friends over and sit in the living room and watch it on TV, or to be stuck in traffic on Store Drive and put on WBCA 102.9 is a different venue. It's different. It's just real TV and it's real radio. I mean, there's something to be said about the fact that, you know, yes, we, anyone can put on anything on YouTube and you can have a YouTube station. My granddaughter's got a YouTube station. It's great and groovy, but I've invited her to my, to, to, to my show at BNN. She stood there and sang the National Anthem. It was the most proud moment of her life because she was doing it on live television that people all over the city of Boston or streaming midnight in Paris, they were watching, that, they were watching her do that. And there's a big difference. I think the other thing is that um, BNN has a reputation, and I've been asked by um, a millennial that would BNN co-brand their video, cha their YouTube channel, in order to be able to add a little more weight to what it is that's being broadcast there. And so, we're I think that we're in a transition stage in terms of where, how things are going to shake out. We don't know. Um, what the cable providers are going to do long term. We definitely need to be looking at all the different ways that we can broadcast, but the, the good old cable TV is actually a new um, the, um, output for a lot of the kids who are very comfortable with um, their streaming up from their phones. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Susan O'Connor and Glenn Williams from BNN Media. Glenn, um, I guess another thing you might want to do is extend reach into more neighborhoods and yes. get more producers in there. What, what would a producer in, in this decade be doing? Well, a producer today would be, number one, to be formulating their program, deciding on what kind of content they want to share. One of the things that I did when I first came in with the uh, radio station was I reached out to every single uh, Main Street's director all across the city. There's 20, 22 of them or whatever, and invited them to come in and talk about what's great about their community. I did the same with the city councilors. I did a little research and I found, not you, Chris, but I found that uh, every 30 minute broadcast from national news or something, there was four minutes dedicated to good news, to, to happy thoughts and stuff. And I wanted to kind of change that formula just a little to where people were getting a report about their neighborhood, about West Roxbury, about Charlestown, about East Boston that was positive, that was good, that was something positive that was going on. And I think that if we get these Main Street people who are dedicated and committed to their communities, get them to get the outreach and get some people from those communities, some of the people from that Y, from that Boys and Girls Club, from, from wherever, 
that they can come and they can come and sit down and they can talk about their neighborhood. They can talk, they can bring friends in, they can bring people that are doing professional changes and doing great things and sit down and talk for a little while about that, get people to call up on the phone. That's, 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 that's a mission. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's my first couple of weeks. <laughs> and finally, finally, there's a national challenge out there about the court decisions, regulatory decisions, uh, worry about funding. What's going on? Well, the FCC is proposing a new way of calculating cable fees, which is the bread and butter funding for all peg access stations. And what they are doing is proposing to let the, right now, cable fees are calculated at 5% of the basic cable. So if you've got HBO, it doesn't count, but it's just your basic cable. Um, and they're trying to uh, say that the cable providers can deduct from those cable fees the value of anything else that they provide to you. So we have a channel that on which NNN is broadcast. If they were to... Um, value that at $2 million, well then they would deduct $2 million from whatever the cable fees that were collected from the city of Boston. And that would significantly reduce operating um, monies. The, um, the second threat is that um, Manhattan Neighborhood Network versus Halleck is uh, a Supreme Court case that is challenging uh, whether or not Peg access stations, because they receive money from their municipalities, are state agents, or whether they are in fact a, a nonprofit, and then that uh, determines uh, the rigidity of how the First Amendment is applied. In the case of BNN, we do not, uh, in any way, um, restrict people's views as they are expressed, as long as they're not hate speech or fall under certain categories. But if someone wants to um, have one opinion that you're that I personally might be differ uh, differ from them, I can't and I won't shut them off. And so it is one of the places where people can uh, really do have a f a freedom of expression. This Supreme Court case could, in in essence, um, make it make that more difficult. And finally, if people want to find out how to get involved, is a good way they can follow up on that? Well, absolutely. I mean, we have a couple of, we've, we've extended our Facebook and our social media challenge out there. So BNN Media, just put that in any of those kind of things and it brings you right to it. But uh, I, I think that if people go to our website, www.bnnmedia.org, and just click around and search around a little bit, you know, they'll find out an awful lot about what's happening. Or tune into the stations. Well, while you're sitting in the car, like I said, in traffic on Storrow Drive, 102.9 FM, we, we do an awful lot of talking on that station about the benefits of being, being of, of the platform of freedom of speech. Like Susan was saying, uh, it's such an important uh, part of our livelihood and uh, such an important right of ours that, um, that we're fighting hand in, hand in fist to make sure that we keep that right for the citizens of this community. Well, I'd like to thank you both. Congratulations to Glenn Williams. And thank a thank you, you to Susan O'Connor for stepping in here in the interim.